One of the most frequently asked questions by Polar customers is how close should my predicted fields of a modeled impedance align with the measured results from my impedance test system? This brief presentation shows you what you should expect and how you can best optimize your controlled impedance PCB yields. Polar's always advised that closing the loop between predicted and measured results will help you improve your production yields. And built into Polar tools such as the SI8000 field solver and the SITS controlled impedance test system are the ability to talk to each other and display the measured data against predicted data so you can better understand how your prediction is aligning with production. The SI8000 field solver is a powerful tool for simulating impedance. It can also be used for simulating production tolerance. You can vary the width, the height, the dielectric constant, or any other parameter that will affect impedance and look at the predicted production variation. The SITS is an industry standard control impedance test system, which is designed for especially accurate and repeatable measurements of impedance. It's got an extremely good gauge R&R, &R, meaning you can rely on the results from the SITS to generate repeatable, reproducible impedance measurements. What's maybe less known is that the log file from the SITS, the data log file, can be read into the SI8000 and those measurements can be compared with the predicted results. So on the next slide, we'll take a look at how you can do that comparison. Selecting this icon here will bring up a dialog to allow you to import a SITS log file and bring it in to the field solver for further analysis. This shows a sample imported 60 ohm surface microstrip. Key information, you can see the file name. I've read in a sample file from the SITS and out of the log file, it shows you it's a SITS 880 with a serial number with 160 records and um, coupons, four coupons per board, total coupon count of 40 coupons. And in the bottom half of the screen, you can see it's a nominal 60 ohm line. And this production run has all been slightly on the high side of 60 ohms. So at a glance, it's very easy to read in the data and see how the measured compares with the predicted. The fastest way to make sense out of the data in the data log is to use the project's capability in SI8000. By using a project, you can map each individual structure to the layer test information from the SITS. So here we can see layer one, normal impedance 60 ohms, layer three, we've got 60 ohm, layer six and layer eight. And when you bring the data in, you can simply drop down and select the structure of interest that you want to graph the modeled versus measured data. Looking more closely at the analysis graph, you can see that on the graph settings, we can include the nominal modeled impedance, as the case here. We could include the minimum maximum modeled impedance and also the measured impedance. So you can select these lines on and off, nominal impedance measured and tolerances plus and minus on the measured impedance. So this lets you look very comprehensively at what you expected and what you measured. In this example, I've turned on the measured impedance options to include both nominal and the positive and negative tolerance. And you can see here that the measured is all well within spec, but it's not really centered. Everything is slightly on the high side. So if you wanted to adjust anything, you'd want to adjust so that you brought it back down towards centering around the nominal impedance. This batch of PCBs had a nominal spec of 60 ohms. And if you remember on the previous slide, they were all well within the specification, but all slightly on the high side. So if we look at this histogram view, you can see that the lowest measured impedance in the batch was actually 60, which was the specification. The mean was about 62 ohms, and the maximum that was measured in the batch was 64 ohms. Sometimes a customer will come to us and measure one coupon and say, well, the measured was four ohms away from the modeled, which was 60 ohms, 
well, why is the field solver wrong or why is the impedance measurement wrong? And by looking at a group of measurements, you can see what the normal is and what the expected spread of measurements are from a production set of data. Various things can be done to the stack up design and to the design of the PCB to make this tighter, but those are the subject of another presentation. If you prefer, you can view the data in a tabular form in a measurement grid and further process this in Excel if you want to do further statistical analysis. A brief summary that you should always expect production variation and it's important to look at the spread of measurements that are coming from the test system. For designers, it's worth asking for the data logs to be brought back from your fabricator and fabricators, it's always worth working with the designers to see if the stack up can be improved to fine tune the average impedance in a group of measurements. When you're correlating work, it's best to work with data from a batch of measurements. And ultimately, the process capability will depend both on the processes in the fabricator and the quality of the stack up design. Thank you for watching this brief presentation on correlating measured with model data. And if you'd like further information, contacts at Polar are provided on the next slide. Thank you.